yes, what's up everyone, homemade madness, back at it. Welcome to part 3 of my homemade jet ski build. In case you missed it, in the first two parts I made this jet ski so far using my homemade set of plans. And today I'll show you how to build a jet drive for a jet boat or in my case jet ski or even a flyboard. This jet pump will be easily capable of handling over 200 horsepower and you can build it quite simply using my homemade set of plans. So secretly I've always wanted to have a jet boat, especially after seeing what they can do and how much fun they are. But the big problem with building a jet boat like this, it's really hard to find a big enough, second hand and complete jet drive for a jet boat and buying one new is just way too expensive. So I've decided to build my own. Now obviously there are just some parts in this jet drive you cannot make yourself. These are the main jet pump with impeller and the drive shaft. But what I will make myself is the intake, intake rate, main nozzle, steering nozzle and reversing cap. So to start off, I bought myself a jet pump from a Sea Doo jet ski. I got it from this website called Jet Parts. You can find all the needed parts in the links in the description. So the pump I'm using is also used in Sea Doo jet skis all the way up to 250 horsepower, and all parts are very commonly available. So after buying the pump, I went to my local Sea Doo dealer and measured the Sea Doo's intake and other parts really carefully. Then I designed my own jet using the measured dimensions in such a way that it can be easily made from aluminum sheeting but still matches the perfect shape of the sea parts as closely as possible. The parts are pretty easy to make because everything can be cut from a single sheet of 4mm aluminum using one to one paper templates. All you really need is an aluminum welder or a friend who has one and a simple homemade bender to help you make the parts, which I'll also show you how to build really easily in this video. You can also just cut out and bend the parts yourself at home and have a professional welder quickly weld them together. So after the jet drive is finished at the end of the video, I'll build it into my homemade jet ski hull and we'll take it for a quick test drive in the water. So let's do it. Okay, so I got all the paper templates glued to the aluminum and next job is to simply cut these out using a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade. Because it's aluminum it should cut pretty easily and to make sure I don't cut into my brand new table I'll just put some foam blocks under the aluminum. So I got all my parts cut out, looking pretty good. This will be the bottom of the intake. So next thing I'm going to do is clean this up a little bit and then start bending again. Which will be quite tricky, but I have a plan. Ok, 
Okay, so I got all my pieces cut and cleaned up and now it's time to bend everything into shape. These pieces need to become cones. This is part of the intake. This is part of the reverse cap. So a lot of bent pieces. And to bend them, it would be best to have a slip roller, but I don't have one. But you can also do it with a normal bender, which I also don't have. So I'll just make a quick and dirty bender on the welding table and then we can start bending. Okay, so I got the bender finished, works pretty good, not bad for about 20 minutes of work. It does right angle bend pretty good and also round shapes and cones, so it should be good. So let's take a look at the plan. First thing I'm going to make is the intake. And first part I'm going to make is this one, which goes here. And it's also directly the trickiest part of the entire jet drive. So to help make it correctly, there are these molds, which can be made from wood. So I'll make this and then start making the part.
Okay, so intake is almost done. Only have to cut out this hole here and make the tube for the drive shaft, but I'll do that later. So everything fits pretty nicely and the welding turned out, well, pretty decent for my first time welding aluminum. And I also welded all the insides. As you can see, and then reach in here with the angle grinder to make it all nice and smooth. Also these edges and down here. Everything ground down just to make it all nice and smooth for the water to flow here. So I'm very pleased how this turned out and I think it will work just fine. So next I'm going to work on the nozzle cone, which you can see here. So I'll bend some cones, weld it, smoothen out the inside again and then we have the nozzle. Okay, so I got the cone all welded up and I had some contamination on the material, so the welds didn't turn out brilliant. So I guess I'll grind these welds down now, just to make it look a bit better. And then I'll grind down the inside too, to make it all nice and smooth.
Okay, so the jet drive is complete, looking very good. I've just added this tube off camera and I'm still waiting on parts to seal this from water, so I'll do that later. But for now, let's put it in the jet ski and see if it works. Now finally, to seal the shaft, to prevent water from coming out here, I'm just going to use the original c system, which consists of this rubber hose with a carbon ring, which is super flat, and this stainless steel part, which is also super flat, and this simply matches up with this surface and creates a seal, and it's pressurized by this tube, and they're all original c parts, so it should be pretty good and easily replaceable. So this part goes on here, this goes on the shaft, and then we have a seal.
Okay, so that's it for, for part three, guys. Um, it's working pretty good for a drill engine. It goes pretty quick. So next part, we'll build in the engine. See you then.